The GeForce 4 MX was maybe Nvidia's first PR or marketing disaster. It had nothing to do with the GeForce 4. It performed slower than the GeForce 3 and it was built on GeForce 2 technology. Many customers felt really disappointed and misled. Financially, for NVIDIA, it was a huge success. It allowed them to have a GeForce 4 product at every price level ready to go. And you could pick them up at retail, but they also came shipped, already installed in many pre-built PCs. And that's the reason that to this day, you will find these cards quite easily on the used market. Prices should not be too outrageous. Now for Windows XP gaming, if you want to play like Doom 3, Fear of Far Cry, they are really not good enough. You should look elsewhere. But what about Windows 98? They could have the right combination of performance, compatibility, uh, availability and pricing. So that's what we will find out in this video. Calling it a GeForce 2 Plus or GeForce 2 Super, that would have been more appropriate. It has the same DirectX 7 features, but with improved efficiency at the same clock speed. We have added features like dual monitor support. There was hardware accelerated DVD playback and better anti-aliasing. NVIDIA was also counting on developers including different render paths. So if you had a DirectX 7 GPU, you would get lesser graphics, not as detailed, but at least the game would run and the performance was not that bad. It was only later that people really noticed when games started to exclusively support DirectX 8 with the GeForce 4 MX card, you would get an error message that this video card is not sufficient. Another factor is which model of GeForce 4 MX do you have? Here are three versions and they're all totally different. Let's start with this one here. You should avoid this model. This has a 64-bit memory interface. That means the memory bandwidth is cut in half and performance is reduced. Stay away from the 420 models and the MX4000 as well. Anything ending with SE. You really want to have a 128-bit memory interface like this card. This is the MX440 and it does mention here the 128-bit memory interface. This card will perform much better, meaning you can play games at higher resolutions with more details. If you're lucky, try to find this one. This is the MX460, the high-end version. This is a model from Asus and this is the card that we're going to use in this video to do all the benchmark results and gameplay. What I like about this card is it is passively cooled, no fan, no moving parts. It means more reliable and no noise. We only have a VGA output here. Some cards have DVI. We also get uh, S-Video and Composite Out to connect to an old school TV. We have an HEP interface and it is 4X HEP. This MX460 has a GPU clock speed of 300 megahertz, 64 megabytes of memory, DDR with a 128-bit memory interface, clock speed is 277 megahertz with a transfer rate of 544 mega transfers. And here we have the model number. This is the main board we're using. It is from Gigabyte, the GA-K8VM800M, socket 754. We have two DDR slots. We have two ID ports, floppy port, HEP8 interface, three PCI slots. Here's socket 754 and the chipset is from VIA. The processor we're using today is the AMD Athlon. It is the 3400 plus. 512 megabytes of DDR400 memory. For sound, we're using the Creative Labs Sound Blaster Live, model number CT4830. For storage, a 32GB SATA SSD from SanDisk together with the StarTech ID to SATA adapter. I ran a TTO disk benchmark to measure the performance of storage and it's excellent. We're getting around 100 megabytes per second reading and around 80 megabytes per second writing. To boot the system from a floppy image, we're using the GoTech USB floppy emulator. The Ugreen USB to SATA adapter, that lets me transfer all the games, the Windows files, the benchmarks, the drivers onto the SSD from my modern desktop. 
In terms of software installation, I'm following the same process with most of my machines. I'm loading the BIOS defaults and then I'm disabling any resources that we're not using like Ethernet, the onboard audio, the serial, the parallel ports, USB 2 and so on. Then I'm installing Windows 98 SE followed by the VIA chipset drivers. They automatically enable DMA mode so we don't need to do this ourselves. For the drivers, we're using the NVIDIA 45.23. These are highly regarded in the retro PC community. They have a good balance uh, between performance, compatibility and features. And for the Sound Blaster Live, we're loading the ODG 2 ZS drivers. And as always, you will find links down below in the video description with resources if you want to find those downloads. Let's run some benchmarks. GL Quake shows that OpenGL performance is excellent. Even at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 86 FPS. Let's enable some eye candy features, 2XAF and 2XAA. And we can see at 1280 by 1024, it is still playable with 66 FPS. Draken supports the DirectX 6 API. This game is a bit more demanding, but even here, 1600 by 1200, 67 FPS, which is beautiful. Enabling 2XAF and 2XAA is a little bit of a struggle for Draken, but up to 1024 by 768, we are still getting 71 FPS. And now let's test a few games. The first one is Tachyon the Fringe from the year 2000, developed by Nova Logic. They are well known. They did uh, Comanche Maximum Overkill and also the Delta Force serious. So this is a good old space shooter right up my alley. It supports up to 1024 by 768 which is the resolution I've been using to capture all the footage. All the details I max them all out and there are also some audio audio quality settings that's also maxed out and I'm using a joystick the Thrustmaster T16000M. There are no drivers needed, you just plug it in and Windows 98 installs some USB input drivers. Um, there's a control panel where you can check that all the functions work, the rudder, the throttle and so on. And yeah, in the game you can map some of the keys around, but it wasn't really necessary. The throttle and the rudder that worked out of the box. I really like this game because it has a nice balance. It's quite easy to get into, but it has enough complexity to get you going. So first you accept some training missions uh, to get used to the controls, the weapons and everything. And in terms of complexity, I feel it's somewhere between like Wing Commander and X-Wing. So it's very similar to Wing Commander. You have missions where you need to escort ships or take out enemies. But it also has things like uh, where you can distribute the energy to your shields and to the weapons, very similar to X-Wing. So um, yeah, all in all, I played maybe an hour or so and really enjoyed it. And going forward, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is uh, save the save games at the end of doing a video project and then I can continue uh, playing games with the next test machine. So you fly missions, you get paid, you can upgrade weapons and features of your ship and very likely you can buy faster ships as well. So yeah, really looking forward. There is a, a plot in there, a story and you can do side quests. So really excited. This game, you can buy it from GOG and you just copy the game folder. So you install it under Windows 10, copy the game folder across and it works straight out of the box. The next game is Max Payne by Remedy Entertainment. I don't think this needs an introduction, but it's really the first time that I'm playing this. Is out of Finland by members from the demo scene group Future Crew. They made Death Rally, a game published by Apogee. And then later, the next game was Max Payne in 2001. And some of the assets of that game ended up in 3D Mark 2001 SE, which is really interesting. This game is quite dark and violent. Uh, you are starting off as a, yeah, as a cop and then something happens to your family and you become an undercover DEA agent and there's some meeting in a subway station that goes south. And there's this concept of bullet time where you can slow down the speed and you can still aim and shoot. 
I struggled a little bit with the controls. Maybe my reactions are just not <laughs> fast enough, but it was a little bit clunky and I kept dying. So I find even on easy, this game seems to be a little bit on the hard side. Um, I couldn't find enough health um, and, and kept dying. So maybe I need more practice or if you have any tips to let me know. We're running a 1024 by 768 graphics, all the details are maxed out. And this is the Steam version. Now, you know Steam doesn't work under Windows XP, under Vista, let alone Windows 98. So you have to grab a no CD patch, copy it into the folder, and then the game runs under Windows 98 without any dramas. I'm continuing to play Screamer 4x4. I really like this game, a four-wheel drive racing simulator. It has the OpenGL API, but also supports Direct 3D and Glide. On the uh, GeForce, go with OpenGL. It's the fastest option. We're running at 1024 by 768. The game was released in 2001, developed by Channel 42 software developer. It's a fun game, but what I'm noticing is I'm not making much progress. So it's, yeah, it seems quite hard. I haven't been able to unlock anything. Uh, supposedly you're able to unlock new cars and tires and whatnot but yeah i find Come the on. championship you really difficult so maybe i need more practice or some sort of a cheat code total annihilation a really fun rts game and uh, i've been playing this quite a bit the technical aspects are really impressive so i'm using a 16 by 10 monitor with 19 20 by 1200 pixels the GeForce supports that resolution and so does the game and you get a really wide um, image of the game world and i also figured out that you can queue commands which is really interesting so in the beginning when a game is paused you can already queue commands and build some of your infrastructure and then you just uh, unpause the game and off it goes. So the technical aspects of this game are impressive. It runs silky smooth, of course. And yeah, I want to play more. So I'm gonna keep those safe games for future projects. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing with the GeForce 4 MX under Windows 98. Performance is excellent. And this is very similar. It reminds me of the GeForce FX, which back in the day, uh, it was a video card that you wanted to avoid, very poor DirectX 9 performance. But now for retro gaming, they have become very desirable. And these cards, yeah, it's very similar situation. Back in the day, you wanted to avoid them. But now for Windows 98 retro gaming, these are really, really nice. OpenGL performance is excellent. NVIDIA does OpenGL really well. And DirectX 7, that's all you need under Windows 98. If you want DirectX 8, in my opinion, you better off going with Windows XP anyway. The specifications of the video card today matter a lot, especially the memory bus. Avoid 64-bit interfaces. Apparently, there are even cards with SDR memory. These are even worse. So you want the full 128-bit interface. So look for a MX440 or MX460. A few notes on the driver. We're using driver version 4520. Three, if you have a half decent processor, together with this video card, you will have a good experience in most games. But there are some edge cases where a GeForce 2 might be better. Using a GeForce 2, you can use very old video drivers. And there are some games out there that might have compatibility issues with this video card and this driver version. So a GeForce 2 lets you try out more drivers, different drivers. And also CPU performance. The 4523 is a little, little bit more demanding on the CPU, so you want to have a half-decent processor. If you're using something slow, like an entry-level Pentium 2, again, you might be better off with a GeForce 2 and some older drivers because they are more efficient. And also look out for faster options. Maybe you come across a GeForce 3 or a GeForce 4 Ti, like this one. This is the GeForce 4 Ti 4200. They are much faster and they support DirectX 8, so you could use Windows XP, or maybe build a dual boot machine with both operating systems. So all in all, as long as the memory interface has 128 bits, the GeForce 4 MX gets the thumbs up. Highly recommended for Windows 98 retro gaming. You will have a good experience.
Now below in the comments, I would love to hear from you, your experience with the GeForce 4 MX. Were you misled by Nvidia or were you clever enough? Uh, did you stay up to date with the reviews and you knew exactly what's going on? Would love to hear from you. And also future video suggestions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I read every comment and always love hearing from you. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.